on getting the microphone to work. I apologize for that. Um, quick note, if you haven't handed in that review that we do at the start of class, go ahead. If you hand it in late, um, it's, it is a regular homework assignment, so just be 10% per day, so don't worry about that too much. Um, if you haven't downloaded the slides yet for today, make sure you do that. If you are wondering where a lot of the questions from that midterm review came from, they, they really came from, from not the homework you gave you, but what was happening to people during the homeworks. I, I'm still getting a lot of submissions that are github.com. Right? And it, it's got to be github.io, you know, things like that. Um, I had some people who had never actually seen the inspect element screen before. Right? And, and like the lines going through it. So this was really our attempt to be like, oh, hey, you've gotten this far through the semester and somehow you missed this or that. That's, that's fine, but we want to make sure you've seen it before and things like that. So because we're, we're pivoting and we're switching to JavaScript. So the first thing I want to show you is your first JavaScript homework because it's, it's new. Um, and I think it'll, it's like, as in, I've never given this to students before. Um, but I think you'll like it. And if you missed class today or you just don't remember what I'm doing, I made a video. I put it in the assignment of me walking through all the things of that. Because for the first time, we're really talking a lot more about interactivity than just make this blue, make this green. So for those of you who have been waiting for the coding, that is, that is starting. So your homework, I have given you this, this template right here. And not a lot happens at the moment. I'm in Firefox in case you're wondering. But you can notice, I'm going to clear this. Oh, how do I clear? Oh, I'll just refresh. And if you notice, if I hit play video, a little message over here says play video, pause video. I don't think I gave you any more of those things. Up oh, in grayscale, in color, random stuff. So I gave you this template, and your job is to change it. I don't know if we'll have sound here or not. Hopefully not too loud if we do. Oh, okay. So now I'm going to hit play. Oh, let me refresh. <coughs> um, this isn't good because they la 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 and then I can pause it, right? So I can hit play and I can hit pause. And when I do that, I'm still getting the messages, right? I really need the sound for this because it's all about sound. Um, let me try this one more time.
thing is I don't even hear it from my computer. Ah, okay. All right, so I'm going to refresh here for a second. We do have sound. So when I hit play, clearly it plays. When I hit pause, it pauses. Um, but I'm also letting you do things like, hey, I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to speed it up. I'm sorry it's so laggy for you. But you get the general idea we can slow it down and speed it up. Down here, this one's kind of interesting. I'm going to hit... Actually, I can do it without it playing. There's a mute button in this bottom corner. Or there's a button that says mute. When I click on it, it turns off the sound. Not only does it turn off the sound, it changes the words in here. If it was mute, it becomes unmute. If it was unmute, it becomes mute. We'll play it one more time. The other thing I can do is, oh, that's why. Let me just make it really loud in a second. That's why. I also have a slider I can use to change the volume. Notice whenever I change anything, I get a little message. What's going on? Sorry, it's being so weird. I'm going to refresh the screen just to make sure the speed is right. The last thing I want to show you is I have three buttons down here. Old school just means I want it to become like grayscale. Original is back into color. And random is you actually, oh, that one was a big one. You actually skew the color and the size. All right. If you watch my, my demonstration online, like the video I made, it's all very beautiful. Um, but I think it's from here. Okay? So what we're switching to is I, this is really plain looking, right? Other than the video, most of this is really plain. I didn't want to get people distracted too much. There's a little bit of CSS in there. Um, to be honest, we're turning things on and off in the CSS. So today, my job is to have you look at the slides that I'm going to talk about with JavaScript and say, okay, I can see the connection between what I'm talking about right now and what we're going to do in this homework. Okay? Um, I will tell you this. Today in class, I'm not talking about videos like themselves, but if you just go to the video documentation, it'll show you, oh, to play, it is play. You know, they've got the whole list of different functions you're going to call. All right. Um, so I'll wait and ask if there's questions on that at the end of the class because it might make more sense than asking for questions now. <laughs> the portfolio draft. Portfolio draft was my way of two things. One, people who, were, who did the portfolio draft and did it successfully have all their content. It's ugly, it's not style, but they have all their content. You're in a really good place now. You really are, even if it doesn't do anything. You're in a really good place because when you come to see us during office hours or during discussion, we can point exactly at what you're trying to fix and fix it. Okay. We can actually click on your code and say, hmm, what would this look like as flex? What would it look like as a row to a column? All right. And we can make really big strides. So my first reason for that homework assignment was, if you did it well, you're in a really good position. My second reason for the whole assignment was to scare people who realize, oh, I haven't done anything actually coding in this class for a really long time. All right, and they're like, oh, I need to, I need to get back on this, right? Because I know you have three other classes, four other classes. They're all bizarre with that, but that's fine. Um, so I am curious from you. Was there anyone who's like, oh, yeah, I have more to work on this than I thought? It U6 may have a week long extension. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to extend it by one week, despite the fact that everyone seems to be in a really good, you all seem to think you're in a really good spot. Would you all like it in one week extension? Yes. If I give you a one week extension and that now overlaps with another homework, am I going to hear, you gave us two homeworks in the same week? <laughs> all right, because people were coming in. And there were definitely things I was seeing over and over again. So I'd like to have the time to talk about them. Right? I don't want to talk about them right now, because at the end of today, I want you to be in here feeling like, oh, I don't know any JavaScript, but I can do some things. Yeah. All right. Big note, we're switching to JavaScript. 
And I know in your head you've got your HTML and CSS and things you want to fix. But class-wise, we're switching to JavaScript. <coughs> okay. Any luck on that, by any chance? Working? Ah. Thank you. And one other. Ah, oh, yeah. Make sure it's not too loud. Um, okay, so JavaScript. What can we do with JavaScript? All right. Um, I have JavaScript as a real programming language because some people. Okay. HTML and CSS, they're not programming languages. They're markup languages. And they're really important. And people are finding that really knowing semantic HTML and good CSS practices, it really is the most important thing. For years, it was like, oh, you can do that in something else. And we're coming back. We're like, oh, no, if we have a really shoddy foundation, things aren't working. But JavaScript is more the programming languages that you're used to in 506 or 507, and the reason that it's a co-requisite is because, and not, not a co-requisite, we wind up here, is, is I need to make sure when you, we start this week that you know what these four things mean. And if you don't, then you come and talk to us about it, okay? So, for instance, can you make a variable? All right? Have you seen variables before, or can you make a variable? By set decision points, that's fancy CS talk for can you write an if statement? All right? What is? Oh, that's how we call it. We call it decision points because you get to a point in your code where a decision must be made. So, for instance, in the upcoming homework, when we click on that mute, unmute button, you need the ability to say, hey, if it's currently mute, make it unmute. And by <coughs> okay. um, looping, which you won't need. In this assignment, yes, you know. Um, and then also reusing code with functions. Can you write a function and can you call a function? If I give you code, can you do that? Okay. All right, so those are like, I'm coming in, and you don't know how to do this in JavaScript yet, but my, my understanding is that if I make references to Python, making a variable in Python, we can make the jump. The big difference is. With JavaScript, we're getting data from the browser. Python, you do a lot of scraping, so you're getting data from like the net. Like, hey, here's people's Twitter feeds, here's people's that. Here we're doing more things like, what's the title of this page? Right? Um, how many list items are there on this page? Things like that. We can also do things where we can change the page. Using JavaScript, we can have a web page and it can change. It's as simple as you could use a function to find out, a JavaScript function to find out what time of the day it is, right, 6 a.m., and then you could use an if statement that says, hey, if it's before 10 a.m., write good morning to the screen, if it's so. But rather than printing to the console, we will actually be printing to a web page. So rather than printing good morning, we'll be printing h2 tag, good morning, close h2 tag. Right, so look a little bit um, So how does it work? Right. How does JavaScript work? Um, really experienced JavaScript users are not going to like the way I teach this at first because I teach it with the lowest possible hurdle to get over. So with our HTML, I always, always, always want your HTML in one file and your CSS in a separate file. That's it. No, no intermingling. JavaScript, for most of my new programmers, I tend to have you write it right in the HTML document. Because sometimes there's some problems when you're learning. Okay. So JavaScript is basically just little chunks of code inside the script tag that tell the browser, oh, oh, don't put this on the screen, run these commands instead. Right. The interesting thing is your JavaScript code can go in the head or it can go in the body. It can go either place. It can go in both places. Many places you need. Other thing about JavaScript that we're going to be using is how it reacts to different events. It'll react to mouse clicks and uh, page reloads and things like that. Um, 
It used to be that we had to use a lot more JavaScript. But now we actually have things like in forms the email tag that will automatically check. Before it was waiting to see if you click on something. Now it'll automatically check. Um, hover and action and focus. Those are all things that sometimes they use JavaScript for. Okay. okay. Um, so what can it do? We can read and write to our page. We can react to the events. We can validate data, and we're going to do that today. We have a really small form. I know we didn't get a chance to really cover forms. It's going to be really small. Uh, and we don't really do these two. Some people do in their separate projects. But you can like detect if you've been to the site before. Um, you can create cookies and things like that. It isn't so much the web design, but it's something you're wondering how people do that. A lot of times they run JavaScript. Because JavaScript is running yeah. here on your laptop. It's not something that's being, it's not like you're sending data, it's being processed, it's coming back, that's more your Python and your PHP. JavaScript is running right here. Has anyone ever heard of Java before? Okay, because some people ask me what's the difference between Java and JavaScript. So Java is like a really big, heavy programming language. It's like C++. It's, to make a program in Java, you need a lot of scaffolding. And then I need to compile it on my machine, and then it will run on my machine. But if I send somebody my code, they need to recompile it on their machine, and then we'll run it. If I gave them the code I was running, it would work. It's very machine specific. <clears throat> JavaScript was designed to run in the browser. So it doesn't matter what browser you're using, whose machine, the platform doesn't matter. Okay. All right, this is an important page. Not like quiz important. You don't have to write it down. This is like, Oh, why isn't my code working in here? Okay. So the good news is white space doesn't matter. You know, in Python, you have like you have all your tabs and you use tabs with four spaces, and the person whose code you copy can use four spaces, but you can use tabs, right? And everything other works. White space doesn't matter anymore. Alright? Now we're in Python, we might have something like that function here, and then you indent, indent, indent. You know that everything from here to here is inside the function. It's all indented and indented. With JavaScript, since white space doesn't matter, instead you use curly brackets. So a curly bracket begin and a curly bracket end. Some people call them braces. I'm just used to calling them brackets. So brace the bracket. Remember how I said you know, white space doesn't matter? Technically, if you wanted to, please don't, but technically, if you wanted to, you could write your whole program on one big line. Right? <laughs> um, and people do this sometimes when they don't want other people taking their code, by the way. Have you ever looked at anyone? Because you can minify it. Have you ever seen a file that's and they keep it all the white space out? And there are times in this class where we might want two lines on the same line. And in that case, if you have multiple instructions on the same line, you need to separate them with a semicolon. So instruction one, semicolon, instruction two. Technically, I think you're supposed to put semicolons at the end of every line that isn't like a looping line. Um, but you didn't have to before, so I always forget. All right? Plus, I used to teach three programming languages at the same time every semester. And so in my mind, I didn't use semicolons because then I got my stuff with the other class. So semicolons, you have to have it if you have more, more than one instruction on line. Otherwise, I think it's really good for readability. But if you leave it off, it won't cause an error. So this is not a type-specific language. But I have anyone here who's ever coded in C++ or Java? Or so in other programming languages, when you make a variable, you have to say exactly what type it's going to be. Right? It's going to be a number, it's going to be a string, it's going to be Boolean. And even in Python, you don't have to say beforehand what it's going to be. But if something's a string, and then later you try to treat it as an integer, it gets met. Right? So with JavaScript, just so you know, that you don't have to declare what type it is, and it can freely, freely transform as it likes. Um, and finally, because some of this might be this might be new to people who coded a long time ago, like me, and I it. 
When we create variables, you either use the keyword var or the keyword let. And I have a slide on that, and I just want to let you know, I learned with var. Var was, hey, I'm making a variable, use the keyword var. Sadly, you don't even need the keyword, and it still works. Okay. But let came out in one of the more recent versions of JavaScript, and so that's what people are using now, but my slides at the moment are still, I'm using both for you, and I'll explain why that matters. Okay, so if you are in lecture, or you are in discussion or office hours, and you are not constantly messing up during the next two weeks of class, it's a complete waste for you. The whole point for the next two weeks of being in class is you should be typing stuff, and then, oh, that didn't work, trying this, oh, that didn't work. If you're not constantly messing up, you're not really learning as much as you can. And if you're too, you know, if you're one of those people who really doesn't like coding until they understand exactly what they should be doing, that's going to make it even worse. So for the next few weeks, make sure you're coding, trying, getting, messing up as much as you possibly can. Okay. All right. So there's no print statement in JavaScript. There's no word print hello world for your first assignment to make you feel all good. So I did want to mention. Um, but there are other ways you can create output. And I just put some of them here. Don't worry about them. Don't write them down and then go over with you. But one is you can actually use an alert, which is one of those pop-up buttons. I used to use those all the time. Super annoying. Okay. We're going to talk about something called document.write, something called inner HTML, and it's kind of partner text content. And then finally, console.log, which should become your new best friend. Right? Console.log is the closest we have to a print statement. Okay. Get out your editor, everybody. I'm going to get out your editor, and I'm going to put some stuff up here. Say. <clears throat> oh, PC laptop. Then you can either make a fully formed dot type HTML file, or you can just put this right here for a second. <laughs> because as we know, the browser is your friend. You can call this if you're if you're already if you're already frozen. Call it JS Tester, something like that. Dot HTML. So even though we're doing a JavaScript today, you still want to call your file dot HTML. So while people are typing that in, just for a second, I wanted to bring up this ID equals demo. Okay. In all the homeworks we gave you, we used ID, and a lot of times, um, in your navigation, We had a lot of things that were like, hey, href equals hashtag gallery, or href equals hashtag prices. What this was doing, it was, when it got here, it would search the rest of the page and look for that one thing that has the ID of gallery and jump to it. Or it would find that one thing that has the ID of prices and jump to it. Since most of you are making a multi-page Oh, by the way, since this is in the slides, don't forget to embrace your friend copying space. All right? You really want the slides today. You really, really want them. So in your homework, I just want to point out, this jumps to somewhere within the same page. What do you do if you actually want it to jump to a different page? If you actually like, don't want to jump on the same page, you actually want to jump to your gallery page. Instead of hashtag gallery, this should really be... This is one of those things I didn't notice this semester. We came up with all the homeworks, and this semester, other than homework one, they were all single page documents. So we just never really mentioned this. It's a straightforward thing. Instead of 
jump to an internal link, that hashtag, jump to the link. All right, does everyone have the in-class code? <coughs> First important thing to notice, if even though it's going to take me a while to get used to, I am now, now that we're doing JavaScript, I'm going to be testing everything with, um, wrong one, okay. I'm going to be testing everything in Firefox. Oh, that's why, because I didn't hit save. Still not okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, so how did I get... How did I get this little window over here? I went into inspect element and I clicked on console. So you can still use Chrome if you want to. The reason I always switch to JavaScript for, or sorry, to Firefox for JavaScript is because it gives better error messages. It tends to give more specific error messages. The other thing I had discovered last night, I don't know if it's true, but supposedly the new version of Firefox that was released last night. In this inspect element now, when, you know when you get that line to your CSS, like this isn't any good? Firefox now includes an info button that tells you why it's not good. So has anyone ever done, like, position inline block? Like, why doesn't this work? It will actually tell you inline block is a main position button. So I might be switching completely over to Firefox soon. I just hesitate to update any browser midway through the semester. Okay. So everyone had, anyone not have this, because it's time for you to get ready. We're going to get 10,000 steps in today. Everyone's got this? All right. So let's talk about things we can do to add stuff. All right. So I've got, <coughs> sorry, it's taking off a while. This is why I think you should go open up the slides. You could, let's type just the first one. Let's say we actually wanted alert pi to be in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here, and let's do it in the, in the body up here. I'm going to say, or the head here, script. And I'm going to say alert pi. And actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to say console.log, hello. So I just added these four lines of code. I only need the script once, and I put this in here. And I'm going to try to do this while we're over here. I'm going to do a little refresh. And I want to show you that when I open this in Chrome, to see no, it looks different than when I open it up in Firefox. This is what we talk about when browsers have different things. Your default style sheet is not going to change this way. Just kind of trying to point it out. So there's my alert high. Quick thing to notice, where's the rest of my page? It's not there, is it? Like, none of the content is there yet. So what this means is in my code, it starts at the top, it works down. When it gets to a JavaScript function, it doesn't keep going until after I hit OK. Then once I hit OK, the rest fills in. Yes? So does that mean that every um, JavaScript, everyone has to resolve, essentially? Yeah, so, so that's why alerts are a little bit evil. Because if you pop up an alert, and somebody doesn't know it's there, they can't go on. What about this hello, hello? Where is the hello? Yep. It's in my con Oops. It's over here in my console. So new rule. Ready for this rule? Because we're going to be super strict about this rule. Anytime you need help, with anything that has to do with JavaScript, you have to have your console open. You have, you have to have a console open if you want us to help you at all with your JavaScript. 
Because what's going to happen is you're going to work on it for a really long time, get frustrated, and then we'll come over and we'll say, we'll open your console and you'll open it and you'll go, oh. There, it says line 12, right there, right there. All right. So we don't know what these other things do yet, but I would like you to copy and paste them. Like seriously copy and paste. Oh, let me go here. I think it was. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the alert because I already have it. And to be honest, let's get rid of it because it's super annoying. Alright. And I really encourage you to copy and paste this. It's going to lead to errors, but they're errors that you're going to get later, and I'd like you to get them now. Oops. So I didn't use the alert high. Does everything else look the same here for you? Well, let me. Okay. So I just copied and pasted it in there. And I want you to run it. I'm going to give three minutes while people copy and paste it and run it. It's probably not going to work for you. Uh, you can have it. Go ahead and put it in. But yeah, it doesn't actually, none of my missing semi-colons matter. Yeah, you can put that one in. Thank you. It's a good catch. That's, we're going to be catching things on this one. And it's M, not A. Oh, no, it worked. It worked? Okay. All right, so there's an error. And I just wanted to get that error might be on a different line, to be honest, depending on the graph. Okay. Okay. Okay.
All right, so it didn't work, and someone figured it out. So if I go in here, I will see that it says illegal character. Oh, wait, where am I? Normally, I'm a little disappointed. Let me pull this over more. There we go. Sorry. I was like, it should be showing me the line number, right? So it says on line 10, I have an illegal character. So I'm going to fix this. And we're close. You also need to fix this. All right. Sure. So I had just, when you copy and paste from things like Word or anything like that, they use a different type of quotes. They use the open and close quotes. And you just want the coding quotes, we call it. The straight up and down. Did anybody copy the HTML part two? I think most of you typed it in, but did anybody copy this part from the slides? Uh, um. No, I'm not Yeah. Uh, 7 Okay. So, some of my undergrads stumped me. My undergrads also copy and paste the HTML. And it messed up the ID equals demo. So any place you copy and paste, we want to make sure the quotes are, are right up. Okay, so now what happens when we do it? If I go back, what is your name? I'm going to put in Chris. Defer. All right. So what did I get? This is what we're going to talk about for the next few minutes about what happened here, why it worked, why it didn't work, etc. Okay, so you have some code. I'll talk for 10 minutes, we'll stop, we'll code some more, talk, do things like that. Alright, so let's look at what this code, I was actually, I'm going to tell you what I was hoping the code was going to do. I actually, real quick, right in here, the speaker says h2document.write. Replace the words document.write with hello world. Or whatever you want. Okay. So I'm going to leave this code kind of hanging out over here for a little bit. And I'm actually going to switch. Just for some reason, I've got to go the other way. I've got to have slides code. I don't know why. So let's go through the slides a little bit until we get to each part and explain what's going on here. Okay? All right. Clearly, I'm trying to manipulate the page. How do we do that? All right. One of the most important parts, uh, tools in your JavaScript tool belt is going to be using something called inner.html. If you remember. A web page is made up from a tree. So maybe over here I have an H1 element, and maybe over here I have an ordered list that has a bunch of list items in it. So these are nodes. These are what we're going to call objects. So in this page over here where I have like, where I have my name where it says H1 Colleen, that node in the tree isn't the word Colleen. It's a whole object. So if you want to change the words that are showing up on the screen, what you do is you grab an element, and then we change the inner HTML. All right, so let's take a look. What I tried to do right here is I said, hey, please go find, go select an H1 tag, the first one you see. Please go select that H1 tag, all right? And then once you get it, Please change the contents of that HTML tag to whatever name I typed in when I did my prompt. Okay. So 
Thanks. Now, run it. Did it work? Did you type your name in? Did it change it to your name? It didn't, right? But do you have an error anywhere? You have an error in the console. What does the error in the console say? Did it say something about null, maybe? No. Does it say document query selector is null on line 9? Yeah. Okay. This is so important. You'll forget it, but that's okay. We'll remind you. The problem is, right here on line 9, I'm saying, hey, grab the H1. Do you remember when we first looked at this? We noticed that nothing is created until after the alert. And nothing is created until after the alert. So does the H1 actually exist yet? It doesn't. It doesn't exist till down below. So what we're going to do, because we don't have any functions yet, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this whole script tag, just the whole thing. Let's just be lazy. Remove that whole thing, and we're going to move it, ignore the apples and bananas, right? And we're going to paste it down to the bottom. So I didn't change any code, I just moved it. What happens now? Did it change? So remember how we were getting on you? Like, are your files in the right spot? It's going to get even worse. Are your files in the right spot? And is your code in the right spot? It's okay to have scripts, JavaScript up at the top, but only if it's not planning on manipulating things just as the page loads. If you're trying to manipulate things as the page loads, you need to put it at the bottom so everything's created for Okay, so quick just to kind of, so what's going on is the JavaScript is going, doo -doo 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 -doo. oh, I found the H1. These H1s have lots of information. Let's, let's change it. So actually while we're here, add another line. I'd like you to print out, it's a weird line. Right above here, I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to grab this thing right here. And I'm going to say console.log. Instead of trying to change it, I'm still going to change it this time, but instead of trying to change anything, I'm going to say, hey, print out that for me. What happens if I print out when I go do, 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 do? Print that out. And I'm going to put this on both screens for just a second. I'm going to run it again. I'm going to reload. <coughs> I'll put in Chris. Try to try to make this side bigger. Oh, it did not print out Colleen or Chris or anything like that. What did it print out for me? It actually printed out the node. So if I click on this, ooh, right, like it's got a lot of stuff in there. But do you notice one of the things it does have? One of the attributes it has is inner HTML. So these homeworks that are coming up over the next few weeks are like, oh, that's a lot of stuff. How about we, for homework, try to make homeworks where you learn like the most popular two or three. So it's going in and it's changing the inner HTML of it and not that. All right, so I'm going to go to this for just a second because I like this example. An alternative to inner HTML that I don't use, but you're going to see it, so I want you to know about it. Ignore all. I can cut. This is saying, hey, find the thing that has the ID of demo and please change the text content to paragraph change. So this is a nice reference to go back to later if you're trying to remember how we change things. So I'm going to go over here and it says, hey, paragraph changed. Now, instead of using text content, I'm going to use inner HTML. Still worked. Nothing, nothing too exciting on that one. But what happens if I make it H1? And I run it now. Oops, sorry. It's actually, you know, 
it didn't just change the text, it changed the HTML of it. So if I refresh this just real quick to show you, and I do H1 with text content, eh, come back. Do you see the difference? It's the difference between it being actually becoming an H1 element and having the words H1 in front of it. So in our HTML, you're going to need that for this week's discussion. Write it down. Because one of the things you're going to do is you're going to go through the page. I'm going to say, print out how many links, you know, change the H1 to this, change this to that. And you're going to be changing the inner HTML. Okay. Yes? So um, is the key difference here is the text content <laughs> Okay, so, so why the slide? Great question. So one of the things I really encourage students to do is go out and Google when they have to figure out something, how to change something. It's the only way to learn these things. However, uh, text content comes up a lot as the answer for how to do things. And then, oh, use text content, use text content. And so I have this slide slash example because I... I think sometimes people are really truly trying to change inner HTML, but if I never talk about text content, it's hard to see the difference. So I have never used text content in any of my programming, but it's a very popular thing because a lot of times people are really are just trying to change the, the text. Um, but if you're all trying to manipulate the DOM, like manipulate the actual tree structure, you want to use the inner HTML. So the reason for this slide was when you Google, you're going to find text content a lot. But in most of these assignments, you will find that inner HTML is probably your best bet. Because a lot of times, we're not just changing the content of the text. We're really changing the structure. You can even change something from being a paragraph to view. Thank you. It's a good question. OK. All right, just to remind people, you got to use the console. The console is so important, all right? So just open it up, have it open, all right? Because it does do more than just print out things. It gives you a lot to debugging. Okay. So I told you I would have a slide on variables. Okay. Um, the two ways to declare variables are var and let. All right. So var has... <laughs> Function scope, not score, I just made the slide to update it. Function score. What that means is if you use var, that function, that, that variable exists throughout the entire function. If you use let, it exists for a small amount of time. So if you using let, if you just if you define a variable using let inside a for loop, it only exists in that for loop. If you define it using uh, let in an if else statement, it only exists inside that if else statement. Whatever the, the Python equivalent of indentation, in our mind, the curly bracket. If you use var, it has a bigger scope and it can be used outside. That's it. Don't worry about it. In this class, you can use either one you want. But I would use let because if you go to get a programming job later, they're going to want to know why did you use var. All right, and so if you always use let and it still doesn't work, you have to use var. It just looks more efficient. Okay. When you make your variables, use camel case. I don't know if you've heard of camel case before, but it basically means when you're naming your variables with something nice and mnemonic, you should always start with a lowercase, and then each additional word goes uppercase. So, um, first name. Last name, um, social security number. Okay. Um, quick note, I learned last week, if you are using hashtags in your social media and you're using camel case, screen readers will actually read it out as first name, last name, and not cousin. <laughs> right? Which is really great, right? So if you're using camel case, if you're Reading hashtag, don't do all uppercase or lowercase. Not only is it easier to read with the camel case, but it'll actually be pronounced correctly. So, good thing to know. Um, do not start your variables with a dollar sign. Seems like a weird thing to tell you, 
But if you were ever learned PHP, which used to be the language, you do. So no dollar signs. Okay? And finally, oh, everything's case sensitive. All right. So when you do query selector, and you can't remember if that selector is a capital S or lowercase s, chances are you'll do the complete opposite of what it is in a bone work, right? 50 50. So case sensitive, it's going to matter. What kind of data types are we dealing with? String, everyone's good with string. As you can tell, old slides still have bar. String, number, booleans are always true and false, lowercase. Objects. All right, so remember how we printed out that h1? Remember I did the console.log and it printed out the h1? That is an object. An object is basically kind of variable that has lots of different information on it, like attributes and methods. Problem is, if you try to print it out on your screen, it'll actually say object. is isn't helpful. The second one, uh, sorry, the next one I want to talk about is something called an array. For all my Python 5 and 6 think list. All right? Array list. Basically, it's a collection. Right. So, if I have this array here with one, two, three, four, five elements in it, I have an array that's a mix of numbers and strings. In Python, how would you print out Chris? Actually, I've got another slide on that. Don't do that. Waste of a slide if you do that. Okay. So arrays let you hold a lot of information at once. And one of the things you're going to do in discussion is you're going to write something that says, hey, how many, how many list items are there on this page? Then in class, we're going to pay list items over. So here, what would happen if I had the variable foods with bananas, apple, and pizza, and I were to do document.write foods zero? What would be printed to the screen? Bananas. And if I did two, I get... And if I did 17, I would get. So the interesting thing is, on your browser, you don't get any, like, you don't get error. You don't, in the console, it'll say error. But usually, if you're trying to figure it out, it, it might. It, it depends on the browser and what version you're using. So here, we have something called get elements by. When you're doing your reading and when you're looking at the resources, you're going to see things like get elements by class name, get elements by tag name. Whenever you see this elements, you know you're getting back an array or a collection. Okay? And normally that means you're either going to be using like a 0, 1, 2, or 3 to draft something, or you're going to be using, you're going to have to process it a little bit more. All right? So get elements, which one thing? Get elements. Question? Yes. Yeah, I'm a little confused about like the syntax of the document that people get in or come back. It seems like, like, is there like, are there building blocks to how this is happening? Yeah. Really, Give me one second. Because I love that you asked about the syntax. Because remember, I said this is an old slide, yet no one has ever noticed. One second. That this should actually be. Never notice that. Okay. So the question. And the question is exactly right. The question is, hey, where does this like logic come from? Like, how do I know this? It comes from practicing this. All right. So we always start with the document because the document is a page. All right. And so if I say to you, hey, grab all the list items, you can think, oh, the list items, those are tags. I know, I know those are tags. So I can use get elements by tag name. Because li is actually correct. If I ask you to pick out something with a specific ID, there's a get element by ID. 
All right, so step one is always figuring out what am I trying to grab from this tree? Am I trying to grab one thing or a lot of things? And is it by a tag or a class? So in this one, it's going through and it's going to find, hey, search this entire tree and any one of these nodes that has class equal food anywhere inside of it, I'm going to return it as part of a big array. So this is actually just step one. So because we have these parentheses right here, not brackets, because you see those parentheses, then you should know that that's a method. A method, if you're more comfortable with the name function, it's very similar. So when you see these parentheses, document dot, oh, I want to call this method, and here's what I'm looking for. So let me do a few more examples, and then we'll go from that. This is a this is it. it really drives people crazy. There's only one line we really care about. Um, plus is fine. That's how you add. It's also how you concatenate. So if you want to concatenate something together, you can say plus equals, and that appends it to the end. Yeah, appends it to the end. Yeah, appends it to the end. Right? Math, we're not doing any of these math things. All right. In Python, what does equal mean? Assignment, right? It's like, hey. So right here, I can say something like A equals B, oh, I that one. and it would take whatever and B and save it in A. Alright, so now I'm going to use the number one and the string the number one. What does the equals equals usually mean? Are they, are they equal? So in JavaScript, one the number and one the string are equivalent. They both evaluate to the same thing. They both evaluate to the value one. Because think about it, web's all about typing things in. And in Python, wasn't it super annoying that every time someone typed something in, you had to cast it? Well, they typed in the number, I've got to cast it. Right? So with Python, JavaScript, you don't have to do that. These two things are equivalent. What is not equivalent is one equals one. Because if you have the triple equals, it means it's equivalent and the same type. That's it. All you need, only reason I put that slide in, but if you go on to do more programming classes, you really need to know that. Here's how you do an if statement. You will need this for the homework. This is how you do an if statement. In JavaScript, it's the word if inside parentheses. We have whatever we're testing. So maybe you want to check to see if the inner HTML is equal to mute or on mute. You might also just want to check the, there's, a, there's an attribute. You have to get statement. In Python, you used to then have your, your, your colon, right? No more colons. It's the colon. We have curly brackets. Okay, if the person put in that they love chocolate ice cream, then we say yay. Else, the other way. So here's my question. What if I wanted you to test this code right now? My guess is most of you would copy and paste this into your browser document and then run it. But just so you know, anytime you want to test anything in JavaScript, you can just do it in the console. So um, go back here. Here I am in the console. Um, let me think of something I can do. If um, Colleen equals equals Colleen, there we go, not very exciting. Alert, hi Colleen. You can type and practice anything you want inside the console. You do not need to make a whole web page every time you want to check your JavaScript. If it's just a few lines of code, you can put it in the console, see if it's doing what you want it to do. So I could put out here, I could do a document dot get dot get element by ID. I think I have something called demo. And it you can do anything you want to in the console.
Again, we're just covering syntax here. Not expecting you to get it until you actually code it yourself. But these slides are like, oh wait, how do I do a function again? Oh wait, how do I do an if statement again? We come back. So in Python, we do functions with def. JavaScript, we use the word function. Okay. So we'll have function, you give it a name, pretty much everything's does all look familiar? Instead of indentation, we use curly brackets. For the upcoming homework, I have written all the function definitions for you. You don't have to write any functions yourself. I have all the curly bracket begin and ends for you, everything you need. So what you'll be using is you will be using built-in JavaScript functions. Okay, so I have already done that. But again, not going to go on the slide very much because you won't remember until you need to write But it's a good reference. So I want to get you to where we're creating this. So over here, here's my DOM. Hey, here's my H1. What kind of things do H1 have? You have like text and styles. What if one of these was an A? Would they have different attributes than an H1 tag? Because A has like href and it has alt and all that kind of stuff. So, oh, I can hear people clicking on the homework. That's funny. Okay. Um, so, again, point of the homework is to help you all out by saying, all right, what are the ones I think they really need to know? You really, that might not write, you only kind of need to know, but I use it as an example. This is a method. Right? It's a method because it has, for many reasons, but how you will know it's a method is because it ends in this parentheses. So if I'm using a method, I should never ever see something like document.write equals, it's a, it's a function. It, it does things. You don't change its value, you don't try to modify it. Element.innerHTML, oh, no parentheses, it's an attribute. It's all through practice. So let's. So let's go back to the code you're writing. Let's go back here. Or, writing may have been generous. The, the code you've been copying and pasting. All right. And I'm going to stop talking for about five minutes because I'm going to give you a challenge. Um, first one should be a little easier. Oh, I need one slide up for you. Sorry, let me jump ahead to, let me explain this one slide first. So when I was learning JavaScript, because I'm so old, right? We always use document that get element by ID. It would go through, and inside here you would put whatever ID you were looking for. It would go through, oh, I found it, and return. You could also do document dot get elements by tag name, class name, things like that. So that's what we would always use. Um, but now. What I would really like to see you using instead, because it's newer, it's better. Why well, learn bad habits, other than from me, right? So I'm trying to be better. I would like to see you using document.query selector. So the way query selector works is, I don't know why I keep not having enough works. Um, the way query selector works is, actually I've got it in the code, inside the parentheses, you either put tag, okay. or you put hashtag an ID. All right, so query selector, you're going to give it a tag, and it can be a complicated tag. It can be a nav A. It can be, you know, as long as it's only going to return one thing. So document.query selector and document.get element by ID return one thing. They return one note. Elements by tag name, elements by class name, and query selector all can return an entire collection. It might be a collection with one thing in it. it might actually be a collection with zero things in it. But it's always a collection. So this comes back to your question earlier, which is like, oh, so if I use one of these ones, I probably need that bracket zero someplace, or I, I need to be manipulating the collection. So based on, I'm going to leave this slide up, 
What I want to see all of you do, and you're kind of guessing here, it's okay, is I want to see you change, um, I'll put it in here big. Um, oh, shoot, I gave you the right. There we go. That was good. Move back down here. This is where you had it. See right here where I use document dot get element by ID demo? Right here. Leave that, leave that, keep it. But now I want you to use query selector to change the uh, inner HTML to something, anything you want. Okay? And actually no, to change the background color. And then the second thing I want you to do is I want you to use query selector all to change. Let me grab this. I'll make it up there. Change the first food to whatever food you like. So maybe pizza. All right. So you have to do two things here. First. I'm going to move this so you can see everything. First thing you need to do is add this ordered list. And I don't care how many things you put in here. You can just do two or three if you prefer. And then after you do that, your screen is different than my screen. I want you to use query selector to change the background color of demo. And I'd like you to use query selector all to change the first food to anything you want. Okay. Timer set for five minutes or so. We're going to start circling. I'm going to tell you the answer. First, I'm going to kick you out there. Talk to one another. Practice it. And particularly for that second challenge, it's a multi step process. If I had the code on both screens, because you got the slides on there. Okay. Yes. Just because that prompt gets really annoying, <laughs> feel free to do this. Just hard code the name. Get rid of the whole prompt so you don't have I just hard coded it to some random name, but I think you understand how the prompt works and you're going to be testing this a few times, so feel free to get rid of that prompt.
All right, two options. Option one is you want three more minutes. Option two is you want me to tell you the answer right now. Who wants option one? For people, that doesn't mean you lose, though. Who wants option two? So I'm going to give a minute and a half.
All right. Oh my, this is always good because you come up with so many different ways to do things. That this way, <laughs> if you do something in a way that isn't optimal, we'll call it, I can catch the whole class before they do it as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is grab that demo using Query Selector. So, document.querySelector. And the question is the thing we're all going to mess up on is what goes in those quotes. And if I do demo, that won't work. It will look for the tag demo, which does not exist. So just like with CSS, when we have to style IDs, we use the hashtag. Dot style dot background. Now, learning JavaScript can be intimidating because it doesn't turn colors. Right, that style, and later when we learn jQuery, different again, so start small. Right, so if this was me learning this, I would now stop and test. Never do the second thing until you're sure you got the first one. So let me save it. Fresh. Okay. Yay, yellow and blue. Yes. So the question is, background works, background color without the minus works. If you've been doing any CSS, you might notice that in CSS you can either do background or you can do background minus color. Both of those attributes work. Here, it's either background or background color is no minus. Um, partly because they were developed differently. It, and I'm going to just tell you this, it gets even worse. When we do jQuery, we don't, there isn't even an attribute called style that background. It's a method. So I think they were just trying to cover all the races. But again, the problem is, think about in programming, what does minus mean? What does a minus mean? It's a mathematical symbol. So you're not going to see names with the minus because that actually means background minus image. Yes? So I guess really what I'm asking is like, even though we're using dot style, it's not like we're flipping and using CSS. This is still all of the things we use in 
JavaScript. And yes. They can all be different. The CSS only kind of helps you think of, hmm, what should I Google? Right? Based on that. So yeah, it's a good question. All right, quick note. So is style.background a method or an attribute? It's an attribute. So no parentheses afterwards. Okay? I'll do this one and then I'll take some more questions. So, this is hard because in the specification I said change the first one. Right? So, in people's minds, they started thinking as Python programmers. That's fine. That's what you are right now. And they're like, all right, I need to go find the first one. And people are like looping or doing things like that. Or some people try to use the CSS first child. Again, it, the CSS doesn't always work there. So instead of trying, I just really break it down into small pieces. First thing I'm going to do is grab all the list items. All right? So, and I don't need the hashtag. Because list items are a, a tag. I don't need the hashtag in front of it because it's not an ID. Grab all of these. So I'm going to do this for just a second so you can see what's going on. All right. So in the first time, oops, console.log. What I did is I managed to get a whole list of four list items. All right. Good first start. Second thing I want to do is grab the first one. Oops, not the ninth one. That's the first one. I'm going to check it again. Yay, now I just have one thing. Okay. So what happens with a lot of people is they do this and then they were saying something like equals pizza or you know, equals something fancier because you're not from the Midwest like me, but equals pizza. This doesn't work, right? Because the thing is, if you're just looking at the screen, if you don't have your console open, you don't know, and you don't even get an error, right? So some things aren't going to show up. But the idea is like, you can't change a whole node to the word pizza. We need to be changing the inner HTML. Now, someone did something that is close to my heart, which is, let's try to break it down into smaller pieces. Let's make a variable, and that variable is going to equal the list. And then, I'm going to make another variable, and that's going to be the very first item in the list. This is great, because you're breaking down. Problem is, then later they were saying that variable equals pizza. Great, you just changed the variable, but you didn't change the tree. Because when you, when you assign a variable, you're just copying stuff in. So it seems a little weird, but you're going to have to be very careful. If you, if you try to create variables to manipulate the tree, you might only be creating your local variables, not the actual tree. So much more practice doing this in the session this week. All right? Tons. But in order to get to the homework, I need to get to the next few slides. So I'm going to need everyone to walk away from this for a moment. All right. We're going to do more of this in discussion, but I need you to walk away. Oh, question though first. Can we just see the code for one second? Ah, yes, of course. There you go. Sorry about that. background color, but not background minus color. 
Um, it's just kind of the way the specification goes, which is why I had you do it here in class, to learn the most common one. Um, in case you're wondering, for the movie one, there's something called a filter. When you're trying to change things with like the grayscale, there's something called filter. Right? But I'm giving you the CSS for that. Yes? Um, can you also do something like dropping dot query selector and then uh, have it be like head or something and then add, like set that equal to a bracket style, like write a whole HTML? But except, like, oh, you mean on, on this side, right in here? Yeah. Yes, yeah, you can put a whole HTML, HTML thing. Yeah, yeah, you can do a whole HTML thing in there. But you probably, which. So I tried it. And well, so what you might want to be doing instead, though, is let me get to this slide over here. I'm going to switch to slides for a second. I'm going to go back one. No. Oh, so two slides. This slide, everyone, use this slide in discussion. Okay? These are just some of the attributes that you can use. I don't want you spending all your time Googling today. I really want you to spend your time typing and debugging. <laughs> and debugging again and again. But this one, this slide might help you out. A lot of times, if you really want to be adding a real HTML, you're going to be doing things instead like, I'm going to create an HTML element. So when you just add in like inner HTML, H1, blah, 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 that's just text that's someone getting jumped in there. If you want to create a real element that you can access, you would create an element, and you do like H1, and then you could append that child, you could do a lot of things. So, you can do a lot with JavaScript, but it doesn't always work as consistently as you'd like, unless you're using the functions. Okay. Good. This is the fun part. So the next homework, which I do have ready, I'm just making my video again, is the next homework is you're going to draw stuff, like on a screen. Like, the pen, like you're going to make your own little pen, and you can change colors and do stuff like that. Okay? So how do we do that? We've seen focus and active, things like that. You are going to need to learn that there's different things that can happen to an HTML element. You can click on it. Um, a web page or an image can be loading. Um, you can be holding that hot mouse over a hot spot. You can be selecting different inputs on a form. Um, you can be submitting an HTML form. Or in the next one, maybe someone hits the B button, and that means make it blue. The G button means make it green. All right, so we can react to all these things. But normally, whenever you have an event, click, mouse over, mouse read, mouse enter, you always want to combine that with a function. Okay. That's the wrong thing. Okay. So I would expect you to know the different events. Okay. This is a heads up. There's so many. You want to know these right? On load just means the page is loaded. On change or on input. Um, the difference is when you're filling in a form, on input is each and every key that you press, whereas on change is you enter it and you tab that. So, um, you know, sometimes when you're typing in and things pop up and suggestions for you to finish, that would be on input. You would never want to use on input as like a password checker because then you're telling people, oops, nope, that key was wrong. You know that it keeps it on. On click, so hover we would consider on mouse over and on mouse out. On key down, and then there's something called on focus and on blur. Focus means we just tab into it, and blur means we just tab out. So in CSS, it's really nice. We do a focus class, right? We say like, give it a big bold shadow. That's great in CSS, and in CSS it automatically knows when it's not in focus anymore, right? It's not like you have a not on focus CSS rule. In JavaScript, if you change something when it's in focus, you actually have to write something to change it back when it's what's called on blur. Okay, so I gave you a zip file. Let me see that is last one. Okay, just in case you ran out of time, I have a bunch of stuff in my CodePen account. I don't know if it'll be helpful for you or, or not, um, but I just included the links in here. All right, so let's play with the JS code. And you, for the most part, should sit back and let me, and let me 
show you things. Right? I'm going to show you the exact same thing four different ways. That's the exact same thing for me. So you might want to notice in my CSS, I did a focus and a blur. Do you have this in your code that you downloaded from me? It's a focus and blur. So there's a zip file in this week's module. Because I uploaded it, one of those horrible moments where you upload all your code and then later you go to Sublime and you see all the circles meaning you didn't save. So there's a chance you don't have the on focus on blur. So hopefully you do. Alright, so let me run this first so you can see what it is I'm trying to do. Oops, shoot. Probably even gave you the answer. Okay. So I'm going to run this. I'm just going to open it here. It's fine. And what I have is I have a form that just has three things. Two email fields and a submit button. Okay. So I'm going to first put in blah and blah. <laughs> And I'm going to hit submit, and it said, and HTML5 said, no, 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 this is an email field. It has to have an at on it. Okay. No problem. That means it would let me do me at me.com and me at you.com. No problem. It doesn't give me any error. But we don't want that, right? If you have an email and then you want someone to repeat the email, you want to know right away, oh, those don't match. So I have written a function for you. I have one file called, where is it? Ah, forms with JS. All right, and so let's talk about what we think this thing does. Hopefully it's feeling a little okay after today's lecture. I would not expect you to write this yourself today. The goal for today is, oh, let me kind of follow what Colin did here. So what I did is I went into my function, I'm like, hey, you know, reality check, am I here? Yeah. All right, let's make two variables. The first one is the email address, and the second one is the return email address, the second email. So I got those IDs from here. ID email address, ID email address repeat. So I, all I did was grab those two things. Okay. Well, regular HTML elements have inner HTML. Form elements have something called a value. Okay. So what I'm basically saying is grab those two values, gamma is statement. If they don't match, what do I want to do? I want to send up an alert that says these don't match. All right. I want to put one of those back into focus. Because don't you hate when you fill in a form and it just says wrong? Right. Okay. So I'm going to put that back into focus. And you can ignore the return false for the second, the moment. Okay. So that's why I'm not sending it anything. I'm grabbing those two elements and comparing them. So I have the function written. What I'm missing right now, although I think I gave it to you accidentally, is when should I call it? So I could put on input. Don't do that. I could do on input. And if I were to do that, let's close this down. And refresh this. And I were to put in me at me.com. Every time I'm typing a letter, it's saying those don't match. So we do not want to use on input. All right? We do want to try on change. Okay, so I added something here that says on change. Refresh it. Me at me.com, me at cnn.com. All right, I'm about to tab out, which means I'm about to change the value. Hey, it actually said the emails don't match. And instead of going down to the next thing on focus, it actually put the focus back here. But that's so the two parts are what convention I'm looking for and what should I change. So just I mentioned I did this a few different ways. Okay, so that's one way. The second way <coughs> forms with JS2. 
you know what, we don't, we don't need the word this for this one, and I hate lecturing about the word this because you use the word this all the time. So I'm going to ignore that for a second. And I'm going to go here to this one instead. All right. Now, before, if you remember, right inside here, oh, let me just go back here for a second. Here's the problem. So these don't match. It told me they don't match. But I can still submit the form just fine. Gives me an error, but it's not actually stopping anything from happening. Okay? If you want things to stop from happening, where the heck is it? I will find this. Ah, right. I moved it. I changed it from being on change down here to on submit equals return check one. I changed it and said, hey, instead of checking as you type it in, I'm going to wait. You can put it in both places. But I'm going to put it here that says, before someone, if someone hits submit on this, check it now. If this function returns true, we're good. If it returns false, we have to stop. We're going to practice this next week. I just want to show you this one. The difference is, now when I hit submit, you notice things didn't repeat. Okay. So the last one, that's why I gave it to you. Okay. The last one is a little bit different. So when you're working on the homework, I'm just going to tell you right now, you might want to look at forms with JS4. Okay. Because one of the problems with putting on change, on submit, inside your HTML is that you might not have written like the HTML. Sometimes you might decide later you want to change it. So this is called adding a listener. Okay? And I've done this for you. That's my question. Let's go. So I actually have something called email to dot on change equals function. Ignore anything that happens, the same stuff that happened before. But it's letting me actually set up a listener. So by putting it out here, it's just listening. I'm listening. Okay. Hey, to change, to change, to change. So I didn't actually have to do it inside the HTML. I just grabbed that thing that had to change to the JS. And I'll explain to you why you will care. How do you begin? Ah, shoot. Okay. So here's the starter code for your homework. Okay. I, as I said, I created everything for you already. If you notice, I added the buttons. That's almost too big, sorry. And I have on click, call this function. On click, call this. I've added all these on clicks for you. All right, they're all, they're all there. You didn't have to write any of them at all. And on that slider, remember that slider thing to do the volume up and down? I didn't put something in there. Instead, way down here, I just use the second option. Instead of doing an on click, on change, I actually did a hey, I'm going to make one of those JavaScript for functions with it. Don't have to do anything. This makes no difference in what you're doing. But in case people are looking at it, like, this one is different. Another option for you. But you'll really need that for a future homework. All right, so you're going to go in here. And you're going to be like, oh, she wants me to play the video. First thing, what's the first thing you need to do in order to manipulate that video? What's the first thing you all need to do for this homework? You're going to manipulate the video player. How do you manipulate things in JavaScript? How do we access it? How do we grab it? <laughs> Document dot, and you can either use, you know, the tag or just to help you out here, just so you know. I called it my video, right? So you would do document dot query selector my video, right? And then inside each one of these videos, it's going to be like my video dot play, my video dot volume plus equals minus equals and things like that. So just get play to work. Then just get different things to work. All right, little by little. 
And I've got a rubric in there so you can see exactly how many points each thing is worth. The one thing I made that's really tricky, the one thing that's really tricky because some people want tricky, and I think I made it worth two points, is if you look at mine, you will notice in my final example, I added images so the play button actually looks like the play button and the pause button actually looks like the pause button. If you want to do that, you have to do it on your own. All right, it involves going, you actually have to find the tiny picture, right? And you have to do like before and after. So that's the only part that's supposed to be really tricky. There's some that's going to make you think, but that's the only thing that should be really tricky. All right. Um, so I will move the due date for the portfolio back by one week. <clears throat> we're going to talk about, not this week, but next week, we're going to talk about what your big project is by the end of the semester. And just to tell the whole class, here's the deal. 539 is made up of people from all over with so many different interests, right? Some people are like, more JavaScript, more JavaScript. Um, I'll be posting this week. The final project should be a cumulative about 12 to 15 hours of work, which means if you're in a group of four, about three hours each. If you're all by yourself because you really love it, it means more like four hours, right? Some people are super into accessibility and all they want to do is learn how to use screen readers. Right. Some people really want to learn more about DS3. Great. This is either going to be the most triumphant moment of my teaching career and that each of you leave the class so thrilled that you got to explore your own personal interests, or it's going to be like a, I don't know what to do at the end of the day. Right. It's going to be one of those two, but it's really meant to be a, hey, you have two JavaScript homeworks. Everyone has to do those JavaScript homeworks. That is me checking off, I have taught you all JavaScript, right? Then people can decide which specialization they look for. So that will be posted. We're going to talk about that next week. It won't take a lot of time in discussions. You'll also be able to work on homework, of course. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder, oh, just a reminder, I do take the, the lectures and I just put them on Canvas afterwards. I don't know how good the quality is. Um, but they are there. Yeah. Um, it's those forms, the JavaScript forms. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that supposed to be somewhere? It should be in Canvas. Let me take a look. Forms with js.zip. Let me take a look right here. Let me. Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's under modules. Should be near where you found the, the uh, PowerPoint for today. So there's like in code and then there's resources.